Hey you guys, so I just grabbed my truck from Key West uh, after the Key West race. Um, obviously we didn't finish, the wind was just too light. We weren't gonna make it there uh, in time for the finish and uh, the near future, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I still had to grab my rig in Key West and while I was there, we met one of the other competitors with a boat in similar size to ours, a Seacart 30 Trimaran and uh, it's owned by a guy named Tim Britton, and he was kind enough to give us a little tour of the boat. And although it's a similar size to the Corsair A80, it is a completely different boat. It is strictly meant for racing. It's got all the bells and whistles, like full carbon everything, and just a really, really neat boat to check out. These Corsair boats in general are amazing. They make a, they did a great job compromising, like how to fit together a cruising slash racing boat and also make it trailerable and every boat's a compromise they did a great job with that and you can see with this boat the extreme end of the racing side and kind of why you know a boat like corsair has to make compromises to make it more accommodating for like you know the person who wants to trailer and race and cruise it so and at a price point as well compared to a, a boat like this so uh here's a awesome boat tour of this Seacart 30 thanks so much tim and the crew for letting us check out this boat um so check it out here sure i like where wow. yeah you can really see it yeah, yeah, yeah we, were, we had an ipad and a tack thing with a flashlight on it. yeah there you go or velocity yeah. tack i mean it's a high-end package, but all we really is the speed and comfort. Come on aboard, Billy. Really. Yeah, it's cool. It's so cool. Because the boat used to have a big boat. Yeah, pretty big balance, right? Yeah. This is so cool. Okay. So, let's see. We've got a self-tacking jib here. Okay. That makes things a little bit easier. Uh, and six foot of draft with the center board all the way down and it's 30 30 foot 30 feet uh length on deck and then another five feet for the sprit Man. Um, typical rotating mass setup uh it just keeps the sail nice and wing shaped and it's just like a delrin bush like whatever cup in there yeah. you got the regular size yeah regular cup about the size of a golf ball and then it rotates on i think that's a carbon fiber in there i think it's matched carbon fiber socket okay um, pretty standard stuff here uh, going back got our instruments that display to the um where the crew sits out here uh-huh and this is our our tiller the driver sits right here wow all carbon all the way across right there here. yeah and you have an extension if you want to sit forward more you want to need to move forward you can pull the extension and you can come up and be here if you need to be here um, so yeah a lot of options for steering because it's important to keep the weight where it needs to be we're always adjusting for optimum speed you see this i-beam full carbon fiber uh i-beam traveler that uh oh my is it is it also a strength a structural part of the boat just helping Hold the down to the beams. Oh, okay. And that's just a really kind of over, overbuilt, uh, um, really heavy duty traveler. See the size of the rollers. It's not oh, your regular yeah. ball bearing right there. It's wow. just a massive uh, plastic Delrin. Just, just one plastic piece riding on a. One, they got two right here, and it rides on this, uh, on this beam. And just one bolt through it. And, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's very uh, kind of agricultural. Oh man, all thin lines only cover where you need yep. it, huh? Yeah, all, all, 
all uh, stripped lines, kept ultra ultra light. Wow. And then our spot tracker and our our rudders. If you notice, we've got T foils on the bottom of the rudders, which is a a customization that allows the boat to go faster at, at higher speeds and get get more control. The uh, the T foil is is designed to counter the forces of up and down on the back of the boat. So when the boat wants to pitch because of a wave and lift its back up, the T-foil is able to exert uh, 400 pounds of downward force uh, while the boat's trying to pull up. So that translates to a smoother ride and much more uh, control, uh, which allows you to go faster with confidence. That's so big, man. And they do go up and down. So if you, if you, you know, if you do, you know, need to pull it up for shallow water, uh, you can unlock them and they'll come up in the cassette. But we, we always leave them locked down. Is it a pain to do that, or? Yeah, it's not. It's not something that, you know, you only do it if you're ramp launching and things like that. Just so you can be a little more shallow when you go in uh -huh. but you know we always lock it down you know and then otherwise you just make sure you stay in the channels and yeah don't yeah we're not, we're not exploring shallow sure. water three stays you know two side stays and a four stay hold the mast up just like every other trimaran the wire four stay for you the know, we got a pegs. wire wire four stay and uh this is uh dyneema side stays okay and you just have it covered huh yeah we just uh just taped them And this is uh, Dyneema, like tape cover or whatever? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the Marlow uh, product. Yeah. That has a cover on the Dyneema already. Okay. Oh, so it came I mean, like that. Yeah, it comes like that. And then we do this extra. Okay. And so these are barber hulls that you can change the sheeting out angle of the, uh, of the uh, Screecher sheet or the, the Code Zero sheet. Mm -hmm. Whichever uh, sheet you're using, you can you use that to put the, the lead exactly where you want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One is a Code Zero sail, which is our our biggest sail, and that's for going downwind. That goes from the end of the sprit, uh, and it's, it's it's a little bit of a fuller sail. And then we have a sail called a Blast Screecher, which is a combination between a uh, a screecher upwind sail and a, and a code zero. Uh -huh. And that goes to the end of the sprit too. It's for a little bit more closer to the wind, uh, beam reaching stuff. You can also use it uh, in light air going upwind. Uh, it's really, uh, it's really a really multi-purpose sail. And then the other sail is our screecher, which doesn't go to the end of the sprit. It just goes to the tip of the bow past the pulpit. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, where uh, where there's a spot, that's an upwind sort of upwind lighter sail. But that can also, you know, you can use all the sails in different conditions depending on what point of sail you're on. And then you have a regular like and then 95. Our, jib, our regular jib goes right to that fitting right there. Right. That's the jib fitting. Check this out. So this is beefy, Billy. Check this stuff out. Like this is this is the. The, the boom and the, the reef line control, outhaul control, and reef number two. It's just this heavy duty uh, spin lock stuff that's integral to the boom, built right into the uh, to the boom. And is this so? Is this facing down when you guys are sailing? No, this is like this is sitting just like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so you kind of come up to the side of it, and you uh, you tension the reef line through through one of the winches but you pleat it here okay so the compression load stays oh, within the boom and it doesn't go get transferred all down to all the turning blocks and right, everything. so that's right. why they put it here there's less stretch and everything now what about the the foot of the mainsail does it get in the way the foot of the mainsail yeah it's sort of you know it's a loose footed main okay so it kind of just bows out right here so you can easily kind of get to these clutches gotcha, gotcha. yeah when you need to and when you tack it just kind of falls over yeah, the other just, side yeah it just pops over the other side gotcha yeah, yeah. is this all original yeah yeah this is this all came with the boat so this is all marstrom 
uh, built. As, you know, this is all built in a uh, in a um, CNC mold. Uh huh. And do you guys have to do much maintenance to the carbon fiber? No, it just keep the the uh, the UV finish, the protective finish, in good shape. Uh huh. Uh, which it will start to peel if you if it just stays in the sun. But this this boat always gets uh, covered when it gets put away. Okay. So all that stuff's protected. You know, it's and not the, the most uh, practical stuff to take cruising. Uh, but if you can keep it covered, it, it you know, and just keep it clean, it takes care of itself. Tour is complete without. Hotel Tomiko is down below. Come on in. Oh my goodness, this is crazy, man. Thank you so much. Wow, look at this so thing. You can sleep up there in the back. Little well, electronics up there. How is it in here when you guys are sailing? It's fine when it's rough. I think, the, you know, the aft cabin might be the most comfortable, but we found out the fore cabin is actually, uh, uh, can be really nice when it's light air and you need all the weight forward. Uh-huh. And uh, you can catch a few winks up there. Uh-huh. It's nice. Hey, hey so much. I don't know what's up. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Good trip. We'll That's so neat.